I'm Ronnie from Ronnie's Garage and we're having our monthly tech meet and we're going to be taking apart a Turbo 400 uh, hydromatic transmission. So we're almost down to the guts. This mechanism here, unless there's a problem, I never take out. There's no, no place it's going to leak outside. When you pull it apart it just it stays out of the way. So it's, it's really not necessary. Um, really not necessary at all. Okay, now I'm going to come around that side and I'm going to stand the tranny up and show you how it, the rest of it comes out. So, What we have here is a very special tool. It's called a homer bucket with a lid. And I'm going to come around and show you how it comes out from that side because it's he's going to want to see it. You can see everyone. So, so I have that hole in the center of that lid so that I can stand it up. Good idea, huh? There's a socket there. It's a 12.38. Can you hand that to me, Deep? The other one. You know what a 12.38 means? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, I'm just curious, because these people probably don't. Sockets come in many different flavors. Uh, these are deep sockets. They're 3 8 drive. That's the size of that square drive. This is a 6-point. Okay, this is a 12-point. That has twice as many little divots. <coughs> the reason we need the 12-point, 3 8 on this, is to get this bolt that's buried in there out. Okay, that is a 12 point, and it's hollow, it's drilled to allow fluid to go through it. Uh, and this holds the center support. What makes this transmission so stout is a lot of the lesser transmissions, they just put all these clutches in there and they have a long shaft that's supported at the front and kind of at the back. So in the middle you're going to have some flopping around. This has a big steel center support with another bushing in there that holds it all together so it's less prone to failure. These are really great transmissions. <coughs> there it is. So here's that special bolt. You see it's got the 12 points. It's hollow. And what that does is keep that steel housing from moving around. Inside here is where I made my other error. There's a snap ring. It's hard, to, it's not going to be easy to show you all, but you have to do this in a vertical way. I'll show you as it comes out and you can look later. So there's a snap ring down here that holds some clutches in there. Yeah. It's important you pay attention to which snap ring comes out of where. Okay, this is the one that holds the upper, there's a, as you can see, what we got here on top, there's a snap ring. It goes on top, it holds this stout plate in. And the reason this is so stout, and the rest are not, is that there's another clutch in there that pushes, and it squeezes those plates. And if you had a real thin plate out here, it would flex and they need something stout plus they need a good depth here to grab into the, the splines of the housing so it doesn't just spin it. Um, so this is your rear clutch pack and now there's another snap ring down there which I actually put in the right place I just put it in wrong or no I didn't I put it in the wrong place. I, I, I don't know if you guys are like me but I <coughs> Try to forget my mistakes, <laughs> but I have learned not to as much as possible. And I will openly, I, the reason I'm sharing that with you guys is not to make you think I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just, everybody is human. And uh, sometimes you make a mistake. The key is to own up to your mistake and deal with it. Now this snap ring was, I want to pass this around so everybody can see it. It's got a chamfer on it. 
And what I did is I put this one in the wrong place. I think I put it on the top. So that big plate one had pressure go against it. The chamfer allowed the snap ring to come in and move that plate. So it popped out of place, and that's why I had a problem. Uh, so you can pass that around. So those of you watching, pay close attention. This top one is less stout, but it's, it's uh, rectangular. It has no chamfer on it. And the re... Hmm? I don't know why, unless it's just taken up, putting a little tension on it. That's holding the piston assembly against the center support. This one holds the other end of the clutches, so it's getting hammered there. This is going against some pretty stout housing already so now I'm gonna lift this thing out uh-oh so this is this is where the center support goes in see that bolt hole that's what holds this thing this is pretty stout and it's got some good dogs in there to lay against and in here is a clutch and we'll see that later um, and there is one more little snap ring underneath here just to kind of protect the aluminum case and that goes underneath here and it's real thin they're all different. So the key is when you take something apart that you don't work on all the time, uh, I know a lot of guys will just lay this out piece by piece by piece by piece. Now, you know, I'm a professional and I refuse to do that, which is kind of, and plus I don't have space. There's a lot of guys in here, we're busy. But I have done these before. Okay, now we got another shaft here. This shaft goes in, comes through, and actually hooks into some part of those drums. And as you can see, I pulled it out and I didn't, pay attention, the long end goes down. All right, you got to pay attention to all these things. So now, uh, shoot, I should have pulled it off. There we go. Uh, boom. So here's that plastic gear that runs the speedometer drive, and these will split. This is another gear right here which runs the governor. Uh, we have another sprag, so if you want to see what a sprag looks like, you get a light on this. They might call it an overrun clutch. But you can see there's little, how do I do this? There's little ramps. And what they've got is these rollers on there that are spring loaded. So as this piece, actually, this is the part that's spinning, but as it, as it turns on this smooth section here, in one direction, it allows the balls to go to the deep end of the ramp. And as soon as you go the other direction, the springs and that will cause them to lock against it. I forget if they call this an overrun clutch or a sprag. Most, I've usually called them, or been told they were called sprags. Let's get this thing off. And then we get all kinds of more stuff. This is a little thrust bearing. This thrust bearing has two or three pieces. So you can see those little needle bearings. They run against this flat surface, and this flat surface runs against there. <coughs> and if I remember correctly, oh, that doesn't go down there. They run up against, oh, this right here. This is where this, so that's to keep things from moving back and forth and spinning. They could have used a bushing, but it's not as long life. Now, the overall kit, does that just come with soft parts, or does it also come with bearings? No, it comes with the perishables, which would be the steel clutches, the fiber clutches, the band, rubber, yeah, all that. These are hard parts. They're usually not included in a rebuild estimate, because that's, that's always an unknown. Uh, Typically, you don't have to replace them unless somebody drives till they have a catastrophic failure. And that's not just pulling over the side of the road. It's usually a loud bang and uh, things sticking out of cases. Yes. Uh, all right. And then we also have another, see this has a nylon bushing or a plastic bushing that sits in here, if you can see that. If you look in here, if you guys can all see that, I don't know. There are little dogs. That's attractive, isn't it? Uh, little dogs that hold it in place. OK. 
Okay, and on the very back, there's another bushing. That's this. Two bushing? No, there's two. Okay, this is the sorry. This is the part that goes in the case. When you come and look at this, you'll see that there's three little areas for these to fit into. That holds that steady. This has the little dogs on it to hold it steady on this. And then this is the uh, sacrificial bearing area. Now this doesn't look good, but it'll be fine, to be honest with you. If you want to be an engineer and make it perfect, is then... Specs for rent oh yeah, I'm sure there are. Do you pay attention to? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I, I actually pay attention to symptoms more than the specs. Um, if there would have been a bunch of metal shavings in there, then I'd say, okay, I better do that and I better check all the bushings. I didn't see any metal shavings in there. Um, so that's, that's an experience thing.